I've, uh, I've pretty much gone to church my entire life. Uh, I don't say that uh, jokingly either. Uh, I grew up in a home where we went to church every Sunday, regardless of what was happening, unless we were on vacation. And then sometimes even on vacation, we would find a church and go to church. Because that's what my mom was determined that we were going to do. Um, so I, I've been exposed to God my entire life. And long about ten and a half or so, I went to a class in the church I grew up in that was supposed to prepare me for accepting Christ into my life and, and, and getting saved. Um, and I went to the class and I memorized all the verses and had all the correct answers to the questions. And did everything that one would do to be ready to be saved, according to the teacher of the class. The problem is, there was never really any life change. I had a lot of head knowledge, but I didn't have much heart knowledge at that point in time. So all through middle school and high school, Jesus literally wasn't real to me. It was something that I would just kind of go to church and worship and go to camp and uh, on mission trips, because I knew that was the right thing to do to help people, but not because I really felt like God was changing me. It wasn't until after my senior year in high school that I went to a camp and, and God got a hold of me and turned my life upside down and God became real to me and Jesus became real to me. And that change that, that Baylor talked about happened for me. When all of a sudden things looked different, all of a sudden things felt different. I wasn't doing the right thing just because it was the right thing to do. I was doing the right thing because I knew that as a Christian, that's what I had to do. What I should be doing. And literally within about three weeks of, of getting saved for real, God called me into ministry. The thing is, a lot of us we buy the fire insurance. It doesn't take a very smart person to choose heaven over hell, okay? Eternal paradise over eternal sunburn. Easy decision. Get saved or microwave. No brainer. Okay? Sanctified or french fried. I know what I'm picking, okay? It's not a hard choice. But the problem is, all it is is fire insurance. All, that, all our salvation for a lot of us is is get out of hell free card. There's never really been a, a fresh start or a new life or a new birth. Our lives never really changed. And, and I think for a lot of us, we just don't really understand what that change should look like. You know, we know a few facts about Jesus, but we don't really know him personally. And we certainly don't know him in a, in a saving way. Well, tonight I want us to take a few moments and we're going to look at Nicodemus. Because he was just such a man. You know, Nicodemus, he grew up in church his whole life. He was a religious leader at the time. He was a Pharisee, which was a, a religious teacher of the law then. Um, and so he knew the Bible and he could cite a few factoids about Jesus and probably quote some Old Testament scripture. But his, his knowledge of Jesus wouldn't be enough to save him. And he learns that the hard way when he has an encounter with, with Jesus in John chapter 3. So, if you're following along with me in your Bible, you need to open your, your Bibles up to John chapter 3 or your, your phone app. If you're going to go on your app and, and open it up, it's John chapter 3. Beginning with verse 1. It says, there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said... We all know what God has sent to teach you. What what God has sent you to teach. We all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you were born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, he explained, exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. 
The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Now, for a long time, these verses always kind of confused me a little bit. Because I didn't really understand where Jesus was going with this. But I want you to understand, I want to kind of paint this picture for you of what's happening here. Nicodemus comes to Jesus during the night. Okay? He's a prominent, prominent religious leader, but he's, he, does, he wants to be careful in his status. He doesn't want to lose any power or position with people. He wants to be a follower of Christ, but be casual in his following. We know that, because he doesn't come to Jesus in the middle of the day. He sneaks in in the middle of the night to talk to him. And he starts off the conversation by saying, I have no doubt, Jesus, that you are a teacher straight from God. Because of the stuff you've done, the only way a lot of that would happen is if God had his hand on you. So Nicodemus begins with what he knows. It's almost like Nicodemus looks at Jesus and says, I've done my homework and, and your work really impresses me, Jesus. You see, Nicodemus, he just wants to start a casual conversation and some get-to-know-you chit-chat, kind of fill Jesus out, let Jesus know where he stands, that he's got a grasp of what's happening, that he's enjoying following Jesus casually and discreetly. And I love Jesus' response because Jesus isn't having it. You see, Jesus looks right at him and he, and he says, I tell you the truth, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, Jesus doesn't care about Nicodemus' VIP status. And he doesn't care about Nicodemus' good intentions. And he doesn't care about his academic credentials or how much of the Bible he knows. None of that stuff matters to Jesus. What matters is, has your life changed? Is there a difference because you're following me? Nicodemus has come for some teaching and a casual relationship with Jesus, and Jesus looks at him and says, you know what, there is no halfway when it comes to following me. There is nothing casual about being a Christian. You have to go all in, be born again, and that is the starting point for the relationship with me. You have to let the Spirit come in and change your life. You see, following Jesus starts with a changed life. I want you to imagine... The Grand Canyon of Scripture here, okay? You have Nicodemus on this side of the Grand Canyon with his views about what it means to be a Christ follower. And you have Jesus over here saying, you know what, Nicodemus, you got it all wrong. Because it's not about how much you can know about me in your head. It's how much you can know about me in your heart. Nicodemus lives in the land of good efforts and hard work. His philosophy is do your best and God does the rest. And Jesus' statement throws Nicodemus a huge curveball. Leaving him curious about what it really means to be a Christian. And what it really means to follow Christ. And then what does that involve? And Nicodemus is so confused by it all. He even says how can I... How could a, a human go back into a man go back into its mother's womb and be born again? That just tells you how limited Nicodemus's thought process is right now. He's very confused. Jesus goes on to explain that this being born again is the only way to get to heaven. He explains that there's got to be a change of the heart and a change of your mind. And that following Christ isn't about a, a physical change. It's not about reading the Bible more, going to church. It's about a spiritual change that leads to those other things. You see, this new birth, this fresh start, means that, that the evil things that you loved in the past, you now hate. And that the things of God are now the very things that you love the most. The things that are the most important to you. You know, joining Jesus is not about trying really hard, okay? 
you don't get any brownie points for getting things right, okay? It's not about piling up extra credit. It's not even about church attendance. Jesus doesn't, when you get to heaven, he's not going to pat you on the back and say, oh, you're great, you were there every Sunday out of your entire life. He's going to know how real he was in your heart. What difference he made in your life. With Jesus, your best won't do and your works don't work and your finest efforts don't mean diddly squat. You can try and try and try and try and try and it ain't never going to matter. Jesus comes into your life and changes you and when he changes you, you don't have to try anymore. It becomes so much easier to live for him. Unless you decide to live your life for Jesus, unless you really pray and ask God to come in and change your life, you will never be able to see all that God has going on in your life. That's one of the things I loved about Baylor Wilson's testimony is, is her friends saw a difference in her life. And when she was asked what's brought on this difference, all she could say is Jesus happened. I wonder, can you look at your friends and they see a difference in your life and you say, Jesus happened. Have you come to a point where, where you confess all your sin to Christ and you choose to believe Him and follow Him with your whole heart? You see, I think for a lot of us, we overcomplicate Christianity. We make it harder than it really is. We, we try to attach all these rules to it. We think we let the devil convince us that we're not doing it right if we're not memorizing a bunch of scripture or going to church every time the door is open or, or serving enough people or this or that. Well, none of that is about being a Christian. All You do all of that because you are a Christian. You don't do all that because you want to be a Christian. You see, when I was in engineering school, one of my, one of my professors said, the KISS rule. Have you ever heard the KISS rule, K-I-S-S? -S? Stands for keep it simple, stupid. How much better would our, would our life with Christ be if we just kept it simple? If we didn't overcomplicate it? If we just embraced allowing the Spirit to come into our lives and change us? We need to stop trying to earn our salvation. Just ask God for a new birth and a new life and a fresh start. Let's pray, guys. Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for how it challenges us and stretches us. How it makes us stop and think. Father, I just pray now that you would be with us as we continue this discussion of what this life change looks like. What it looks like to really have you come into our lives and for us to be born again. Guide our discussion tonight, God. May your spirit move freely as we discuss this and talk about it. We love you. Amen.